was wearing a red rose, which meant he was opposed to women getting the vote. And as he was about to cast his vote, he was the last one. Someone ran down the aisle with a telegram from his sick mother, and she said, Harry, be a good boy and give women the right to vote. And Harry did. It's our right to vote. It's what I won. Another young woman, Alice Paul, who's heard of her? She was a student at the University of Pennsylvania, and she had gone over to England to study and seen the radical suffragists over there. She came back and she spoke to the suffragists in America, and she said, we've got to make this a little different than what you've been doing for the last 70 years, because it hasn't worked. <laughs> And they said, just sit down, we really do know what we're doing. And you're going to have people tell you that a lot. Just sit down, we've got this figured out, we've got this handled. Well, she resisted, and she decided to organize a woman's march on Washington. <laughs> it was the day after the... Uh, inauguration and it turned into a drunken riot and a lot of people got hurt. But she didn't give up. So she organized the silent sentinels to stand in front of the White House. And the president at that time said he, he was told to throw her in jail and say she was crazy. He threw her and everybody else in jail. Force better. The word was leaked out by a woman prison guard. How many of you have seen the movie Iron Jawed Angels? That's your homework. You need to see that movie. Well, it finally went to the vote. Thanks to Alice Paul, a student at the University of Pennsylvania after decades of work by men and women from all over the country. And it passed by one vote, as you saw. Harry T. Burr at age 24. Next slide. Thank you. Marjorie Harris Carr, who's heard of her? Very famous woman in Florida. She stopped the canal that they were going to build. We know Florida likes these kinds of ideas. They were going to build a huge ditch from one side of the state to the other, from the Atlantic Ocean to the Gulf. She heard about it. She was a PhD from the University of Florida in zoology, and she started an organization to stop it, the Defenders of Florida Wildlife. And she built a coalition, which is always key in succeeding, and she was able to stop this barge canal. Next slide. Who's heard of Harry T. Moore? Harry T. Moore, the league had a trip to his museum in Titusville. Harry T. Moore, was brought up by his two aunts in Houston, Florida. He went on to become the first executive director of the NAACP in the state of Florida. He registered 80,000 African Americans to vote. This was at a time when Florida had the highest per capita lynching in the country. This is what this man was doing. And he was pushing for investigations of murders. Harry and his wife, Harriet, on Christmas Day, on their 25th wedding anniversary, were blown up by a bomb that the Ku Klux Klan placed under their house. So think about the courage, the courage that it took the people who came before us. And we worry about being shushed or being told to sit down. It's nothing compared to what activists faced in the past. Next Please. Here's a young woman who was a former league president in St. Pete, Darden Rice. She saw a need, um, and I'm fast forwarding from the 1950s to today. She saw a need, she looked around her community, she said, we need recycling in St. Pete. So she gathered a coalition, she made the changes, and today St. Pete not only has recycling, I think they just became one of the cities to say, we're going to be 100% renewable. How about that for a goal? She's now the chair of the commission. Next slide. So, yes, we can't slay the giant. I know you're laughing, but we just did in 2016. The utility spent $26 million to try to fool the voters. One of my favorite quotes was by Al Gore. He went down to Miami. He 
He said the utilities are trying to pull the wool over your eyes. And $26 million buys a lot of wool. <laughs> and it also bought phone calls from Pat Boone, endless commercials on TV, and enough mailers to pay for your entire living room. Next one. So how did we do that? How did we beat? That was a very complicated campaign last year. Everybody should give themselves a pat on the back. Yes on four. Good for solar in August. No on one in November. Gosh, that was confusing. Yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> but the way we did it was the broadest coalition we've ever seen in the state. We had the Tea Party. We had the Christian Coalition. We had the Democrats, Republicans, the Greens, Chamber of Commerce. It was amazing. So when all those grassroots came together, we were able, with about $100,000 and heavy use of social media, Facebook, and I don't want to give all the secrets away, but there's all kinds of things we were able to do that really, really swung it in our favor. And we just had to kill it. We couldn't get to 60%, 61%. So we were able to defeat that. Next slide. Thank you. And of course, we didn't have Batman on our team. <laughs> Next slide. But the point is this, Florida's future is in your hands. Regardless of how you feel about what's happening in Washington, D.C., and the country, and the planet, we can make a difference right here in our community and in our state. And we can make a big difference. And as we saw in the American Revolution, you light fires in one part of the country, and the flame spreads around the rest. We have a very motivated group of people. You're spending your evening here because you care passionately, and you're ready to put your time and your effort in. Next slide. Here are just a few of the things the League of Women Voters of Florida has accomplished because we brought such a diverse group of people together to speak with one voice, passage of the Fair Districts Amendments, and winning 13 lawsuits to protect them, restoring early voting days, including the Sunday before Election Day, Land and Legacy Amendment. We collected more petitions than any other group in the state of Florida. Sunrail, we passed it, we were the really almost the only civic group that spoke out in support. We stood in the parks. And these kinds of things are important. T-shirts, bumper stickers, flyers, signs in business windows. These are the kinds of things we do. Local impact, I talked about this recycling, permission to speak in Orange County. How many years ago was it, Carol, that citizens were not allowed to speak in Orange County commission meetings? unless you were there on a zoning issue. Outrageous. So we were able to get that changed. And I don't know, I think Marty Sullivan is kayaking tonight, but Marty led the charge in Orange County to stop the overturning of the comprehensive boundary, which would have allowed much more sprawl. This just happened. Again, building a coalition, using everyday citizens like all of us, like all of you sitting on your superhero case. Next slide. So we were able also, and, and let me point this one out, because this is coming back. We ran a campaign that said, just say no on the bad amendments. Remember the Encyclopedia Britannica that the legislature put on the ballot? Well, the, con the Constitutional Revision Commission is back at it, and it is a scary group. It is a scary group, so we have to be ready 2018, all those amendments that they come up with are going to be on the ballot. So I don't want to take any more time. Guns on campus, that's really important. I don't think Patty Brigham is here tonight, but she's our fearless leader at the state, and she's been incredible stopping guns on campus. Whose idea is that?
Secretary of Lake protecting rights to vote? 70 Panthers left. Should we keep them or, you know, or not? Uh, Health care. There are so many issues in Florida. There are so many issues. But together, we're really able to tackle so many of them because we're such a big group. And we're so loud. And we have good relationships with the media and with a lot of other groups. So, next slide. And here's some university students who, who handed out flyers. And it's that grassroots action that is what makes a difference. It's next slide. So very quickly, what I hope you're going to do tonight is you come up with your issues that keep you awake at night. You've got to develop a core group. They're sitting next to you. You've got to do research on the issue. You just can't run out willy-nilly. The League is known for doing their homework. And think of your group sitting around you as a study group. You really want to have the facts. And come up with a specific goal. Like, we want to pass Sunrail. We want to increase the number of juvenile justice civil citations instead of arresting kids and giving them an arrest record. We want to stop guns on campus. Whatever the issues are, this is your opportunity to try to define it, not too broadly, pretty specific. Then you think about what other groups what other groups might join with us? This is very important. Coalition building is key. The bigger the coalition, the better. Leverage and media is the use of Facebook and Twitter. How many of you are on Facebook? That's great. How many of you are on Twitter? The rest of you need to get on Twitter. Twitter is very important. I heard that from our communications group the other day. We have, a, we have a huge communications team of retired Orlando Sentinel experts, and they said Twitter is very influential today. So the other things we use is we do editorial board visits. We sit down. We take a group. We sit down with editorial boards. We educate them on the issues, and we try to persuade them that we're right. And then we write letters to the editor, and we write opinion pieces. How many of you read the newspaper here? Good. I'm really happy to hear that. Once again, on the campuses, I'm not seeing the, that kind of reading of the newspaper. And I really believe, I don't know how you feel, that if you don't read the local newspaper, you don't know what's going on in your community or your state. So read the Orlando Sentinel. It is a very good paper, and they are doing a great job with a slim down staff. So let's support our local newspaper. And then finally, progress report. One of the things we've done, how am I doing on time? I feel like I'm going on too long. Oh, okay, all right. Um, so, uh, progress reports. How many of you remember getting report cards from school? Everybody, okay. But the point is, Elected officials are very thin-skinned. They do care what the public thinks. And when there's a report card and it doesn't look too good on something, then that gives them something just like an annual report in the private sector to strive toward. So we use the report card method with civil citations. We told the law we had, how many of you are on the Juvenile Justice Committee in here? Great. And, and Kelly, I know set, we have a large committee that they visited with the police chiefs and they told them at the end of the year, we're going to have a report card. We want you to be there so you can tell us how proud you are of the progress you've made and how you did it and what you still want to do. And, and civil citations went up 40% in like nine months. And we're going to have another report card this December. We've already set the date. So that's a useful tool. So, next slide, please. So very quickly, FL son, Mary DeVoy, stand up, please. Mary DeVoy. Mary DeVoy had her driveway moment when 
she heard on national public radio about these neighborhood co-ops that would reduce the cost of solar. She used to work for a utility, and she sat in her car and she said, I want to bring that to Florida. I guess I'm going to have to be the one. And she was. So she went to her congregation, and she invited, looked for volunteers, and she got a bunch. And she finally came to the league, came to her senses, came to the league. And, and we, we really made it explode because we have leagues all across the state. We started seven co-ops in less than a year. We have two staff people, one in Miami-Dade, one in Jacksonville, and we are opening up co-ops right and left. Orange County had 600 people sign up, the largest in the country. And that's thanks to our t-shirts, our volunteers, and our flyers. And it's going to go even bigger, I know it, because Mary just got delivery of a solar bear costume. <laughs> Raise your hand if you'd like to wear that in July and August. <laughs> You're looking for volunteers. Okay, next slide. So happy homeowners. Great. This is an initiative of the league. These are the kinds of things we have to do, things that make a measurable difference. Next slide. Let's get going. Next slide. My favorite quote, Winston Churchill. He was invited to give a speech, a commencement speech. Everybody thought he would do a long one. He came up to the podium and he said, never, 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 never give up. Thank you very much. And he sat down. 